So now that I'm a professional Go developer, I do want to share one of the biggest foot guns that I've run into when developing Go REST APIs or just Go programs in general, and that is around concurrency. So most of the Go HTTP libraries you're going to use, such as Fiber or like Qi or Echo, when a request comes in, typically that request is processed in a separate Go routine. If you don't know what a Go routine is in Go, basically Go has its own built-in scheduler, which is going to allocate time to all these different Go routines and process them concurrently, right? Instead of spinning up like a separate thread for every single request or spinning up a separate process, Go decides that I'm going to have like a pool of threads and let's just allocate different um, routines to these different threads so it can process uh, Go routines efficiently. At least that's my professional understanding. I would go ask ChatGPT for a better description of Go routines. But let me show you a little demo. We have this Fiber app and I want to add a new endpoint that basically just increments a counter. Okay, so let's just add a count endpoint and then we're going to call a counter package that increments a count. So let's go to counter over here and we're going to bring in a count variable. And then we're going to bring in a counter function and we're going to call that. Okay, so this just increments by one, rinse it out, and then it returns. And I want to show you if I go over here and just like refresh this page, every time I make a request to this endpoint, it just increments the count and returns it. Pretty straightforward, right? And then if I save my file, just keep in mind that it's going to clear out that in memory count and then reset it back to zero. All right, simple enough. So what's the issue with this? The issue is that when you have multiple Go routines, all trying to call a function that's incrementing a variable, this variable is actually shared amongst all those Go routines, okay? And due to concurrency, you can have race conditions if it's like a primitive, such as an int. If you're using a map, you'll actually get an exception that gets thrown in Go that can help you debug this. Um, but something for a primitive, it might be a little bit more tricky. And it's also very hard to replicate unless you bring in something like a load test. I think Go also has a way to detect the built-in race conditions. I think it's like Go test and then hyphen hyphen race or something. But you have to write a test around your function for it to detect that. And we all know that no one writes tests. So let's just go to the load test that I have here. Here's a load test written in K6. This is a library written in Go to do load testing. And using this library, it's basically going to run a JavaScript file. I know I, I switched to Go to get away from JavaScript for a little bit, and here I am right back at JavaScript. So it's just, you know, all paths lead to JavaScript at some point. But here it is. Basically, I'm saying run this test for five seconds, spin up 300 different like virtual users. Maybe that's a little bit high. Let's just do like 100. And then I'm going to hit that status endpoint as fast as I can, as often as I can for five seconds. And I actually need to be calling a count endpoint. I don't know, I'm calling status there. Um, all right, so let's just go ahead and run our load test over here, and you'll see that it makes a bunch of requests to that count endpoint. We're going to hit about 163,000 requests. If you scroll back up, you can see that all of the checks were, you know, status 200. They're all good. And then if we go back to our UI and just refresh this, notice that we have 163,813. But if you go over here, you have 163,914. So we made more requests in our load tests. And you'd expect these numbers to basically match, but they don't. This is off by like 100. So what you have here is a race condition. And the reason is because, again, you have all these Go routines trying to modify a same variable. And so the way you can fix this in Go is you need to bring in something called a mutex. And anytime you're modifying some type of shared state, you want to create a lock on that mutex so that your Go routine has an exclusive lock on that thing. And it can update it, and then you can release the lock. Now, although I am a professional Go developer, I've already forgotten how to create a mutex. So I'm going to use Copilot to create one for me. Okay, it's like that. Okay, and then down here in your function, you can say mu.lock. And then you can say defer mu.unlock. Okay, again, so the first time a Go routine calls this function, it's going to create a lock. And this lock is thread safe. So like it's, it's fine that you have multiple Go routines trying to call this mutex. It's not going to cause issues. It's actually built for that. So mu lock, that's going to obtain the lock. And then we're going to increment the count, print it out, and return it. And then finally, we defer and unlock it so that other Go routines can hit it again. So let's just verify this is working. So let's just go over here. I'm going to hard refresh the server just in case. And then we are going to run that load test again. Here we go. Now, it's going to cause your performance to go down. At least I thought it would. Actually, this actually made more requests than it did last time, so that's pretty cool. 
So it made 219,612 requests, which I think is hidden. So this is what the number is. We have no failure. So you'd expect the count to also be that exact thing plus one when I refresh the page. Let's go ahead and just refresh the page. We have 219,613, which is one more than what we saw, and that's because I refreshed the page. So now we don't have a race condition anymore. The count was incremented correctly, and that is very good. So again, this is by far the biggest foot gun coming from Node.js because Node.js is single threaded and you don't have to worry about this type of stuff. You're not gonna worry about race conditions with modifying some shared memory variable because it, everything only runs in a single thread. And so you don't have these weird behaviors in Node.js, but you do have them in Go just because it's different of how it kind of processes your requests and handles your Go routines. Anyway, I hope you guys learned something from watching this. I just wanted to point that out that if you are learning Go, this is probably the first thing I would, I would recommend learning because this could probably screw you up a little bit um, until you understand how Go routines and concurrency kind of works under the hood. All right, have a good day. Happy coding.